very precise description of where we're located compared to the IP address, which is oh, or somewhere in Illyria. Now, for some things, if you search in Italian restaurants, it really doesn't matter probably if you're on campus here in downtown Illyria. You know, you, you know you're going to find the ones in the area. It'll be a 10-minute or 15-minute drive probably. But for certain functionality, it probably is important to know exactly where you are. And that's where we can take a mobile device and do a better job than you could with a desktop one. And so with this location, um, we can, again, with this more precise locationing, we can, the, the little brother can actually do some things better than the big brother can, all right? Because this guy knows very precisely where we are. So if you're doing a campus map, all right, know exactly where you are, you know? And can, can you get the functionality of like a live, of a live, um, of your location, like live, that like you can do with an application? Yes. Like I know like uh, uh, through HTML, through the browser? Yeah, because you, you can do it a couple different ways. Uh, the, um, to, to get like a, a continuing update. Right. Uh, people's phones like with, those with, directions all the time. Yeah. To, to get a continuing update, you can do it one of two ways. Well, that's for an application, though. One way you could do it is you could, um, there's supposedly something built into the uh, geolocation object that continually monitors. I had trouble getting that to work, so I just wrote a little delay to say every 10 seconds, query and ask where I am. I'm going to go, I'm going to walk into the bridge and do this again, just to get a sense of how sensitive this is. I'm going to walk over there. Because the app, the, LC, the app, the LCC's app, app will, will, will give you a live, I mean, while you're walking, you watch right. the dot walk with you. Like my first week of school here, I was like, you know, walking around right. the building with this thing in my hand. Well, so I could find where I was going. well again, the, the idea is, is, is a matter of how often it refreshes. Yeah. So I could write code in here. Right now I'm refreshing it based on the click of a button, right. just because I want to do something real simple. I could easily write code that every 10 seconds refreshed it. So let me go watch over here. This one. Center that I had in the business building. I mean, we were all there the first day you came here, right? Like, you had no idea where you were going, right? I mean, I'm not doing well. well, and those, the maps that are like at different points around campus, it says you are here, but there's like, they're, they're hard to read. No, this was better. Now, I know my way around good now. After being here for almost a year, I stumbled across something where they had a, a radius parameter so that. You had a fixed GPS, and if you were within such a range, you'd have content that would, that would be triggered. I have an app on my phone that it's a reminders app that gives me that gives me location-based reminders. So let's say, for argument's sake, I have like five things that I need to do when I get home. I put them into the app, and they're all in my like home folder. And as soon as I pull in my driveway, my phone goes boom, 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 and it gives me all the five things that I need based on it's called uh, GeoFence. Geofencing is what it's called, where like your phone is always like kind of quietly, actively seeking your location. Um, I mean, I have an app on here. Like when I go to the airport, like I get my boarding passes and all that downloaded onto onto my phone. And as soon as I reach the airport, I mean, I'm talking about when I reach in the doors. You know what I'm saying? In the terminal, it goes off and all that. My boarding passes come right up. I just hit the button, just go right to the thing. They scan my phone and I go right on the plane. Yeah, there's there's an app that. You that's similar to that for stores. <coughs> yeah. So like if you're walking past a store, they It'll electronically send you a coupon. Yeah. Right. The only the only if you're yeah. in the vicinity. The only downside is is it burns the battery. You right. Know, it burns the battery because your phone's constantly, you know what I'm saying, trying to get a I think he's just having like a little couple of these sitting back <laughs> Yeah, I know that <laughs> Starbucks in Saratoga Springs does that. Yeah, yeah. You have an app, and if you are in the vicinity of Starbucks, they'll send you a little right. ten yeah. percent off coupon to just stop it. But I like this about this because then, like, I'll set reminders like for school. You know what I'm saying? So when I get to school, like everything, you know, what I'm saying will will come up that I need for school. So I don't think I'm getting a signal over there because it's not doing anything. But at any rate, you get the idea. This gives a 
very precise location. I mean, even to the point of it knows we're on this end of the business building and not across the hall over there. Yeah, so um, this gives a pretty good guide. And with that information then, now we got to think of things to do with that, right? So we can think of things to do to customize it either on sort of the gross level, the imprecise level of, okay, we're in Elyria versus Vermilion or we're in Elyria versus Cleveland or, or versus Michigan or whatever. Or we can look and we can say, well, what can we do on the precise, fine-tuned uh, le uh, level? Let me throw that out there. What are some things that we could do? We were actually just discussing this. Yeah, right what are, well, good. Uh, I, have an, I have an app on my phone. Um, I know it's not HTML5, but like, yeah, that's it fine. uses, like, what, I guess, what they call geofencing. Okay. To, like, when I, I can set reminders for school and for home. So when I get home, when I pull in my driveway, my phone will know that I'm home and it'll, it'll send me the reminders that I need. Uh, just based on location. I also have an app from United that when I get into the terminal, mm -hmm. my boarding pass will automatically get sent to my phone and all that. But it'll only do it once I'm like, I have to literally, I don't have to do anything. I just walk into the airport and, it, and they send me my, and it sends the boarding pass right to my phone. He was saying the same thing with Starbucks. Like when you walk by yeah. Starbucks or when you get in a, a certain area within Starbucks, they'll send you a coupon and all that to kind of entice you to yeah, come in. Like, there's an app that you can, <laughs> stores can sign up for. Mm -hmm. Now, now, some of that functionality might be a little easier to do in an, in an app that could yeah, live so in the background. That was like my question between like, uh, yeah. you know, the, the different functionality. Whereas a website you'd have to actively go right. to. Right. Right. I have seen, in terms of a web right. deal, a, a con like before we had content based on desktop or mobile, mm -hmm. or contents based on if you're within a radius of like, uh -huh. that finite point. Right. So if I'm within, like, like, for example, a mile of that point, I'll get LCC content. If not, I'll get. I've also, got, I've got, got one. one. Um, I, I, I can think of it. It's um, it's a it's a cafe that if you're in there in the cafe, you can like check in, quote unquote. And if mm -hmm. you get like I think a certain amount of check ins per month, you know what I'm saying? You get like a free coffee or a free or a free dessert or something like that. But it'll only work if you're you know what I'm saying like in their in their store. So you know. So, so you in other just, words, you can't just click ten check ins and all that. You have to literally be there. So in other words, you could, and, and that's, that, that's, that's, a good, uh, that's a good thought. So in other words, you could bring up on a web browser a check-in page. Yeah. What, would what do you suppose happens when, it, when, you, check the when, you, when you click the check-in button? What do you suppose happens? There, it's, it's querying to see your location. Okay. It pulls the location up, and then what, does, what do you think it does? I think it's probably an FL statement, like if your location is within this parameter, allow like like success and all that, like you have checked in. Else, if you're not, you know, we're sorry, you were not, you know, you get a message. Sorry, you just lost one check. You know, you're trying, right. you're yeah. trying to cheat us because I've tried it. I tried it both ways, so that and it, and it worked. So why why am I not surprised? <laughs> I'm a pretty, I was just, just for the sake of science, I was just trying to see if it worked. It's okay. But, um, yeah, that's what I can think of. Yeah, so it's kind of like, a, maybe like an if else and kind of like a condition testing and all that kind of thing maybe in the background. Like if you were at this location, it'll allow you to execute this page and then you get your check-in. Would it store a cookie or would it store in a database? It probably would store in a database. So what it would do, my guess is, is what happens is, um, if you if you click um, if you click the button, it grabs your location, sends a request to the server to update the database. The server probably does a validation to make sure you're within the, the confines of, of that um, of that cafe. If it's okay, it updates the database for you. If it's not okay, it sends you a back and error message. That would actually be a fairly straightforward application to to write. And obviously, there's a login. You would log in first, you know what I'm saying? So you right. the individual users, so you can accumulate your check-ins. Yeah. So right, right. So, so in other words, it probably passes two parameters to the right. database. It passes your user or three parameters: your user ID, your latitude, and longitude. Mm -hmm. And we'll use that then to update the database either 
say. It essentially replaces the little paper card that you punch. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Do we, I, I mean, like my paper card. Yeah. But with this, you could just walk in there and kind of just order, or not even order anything, just use your laptop and play on the internet and check in. And I guess they don't even care. They just want you to come. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> In fact, in fact, you could go at midnight and <laughs> sit outside the door. <laughs> it's probably, I mean, it might Steal the free Wi Fi. <laughs> it might even check the hours. I don't know. Oh, that's good. They could do that. Yeah, they could, the they could grab the time. I mean, I could open How many times, like, the duration between. This is a place in Strongsville, because I actually yeah. go down there this weekend and, and check it out for you guys if you want to go one night and see if it works. Um, yeah, and they could. They could. They could put validation on the server side to say like you can't do it more than once a day. You well, know. no, there, that, there it is. It's yeah. just once a day. Okay. Okay. It's right. day. Isn't that what's the what's the silly application where you're like the mayor of Starbucks or Foursquare? something? Foursquare. Foursquare. Yeah. Yeah, Foursquare. yeah I'm sure that concept, that right? probably works on that on that exact same concept. Yeah. Same yeah. Concept. yeah. But this actually gives you. I don't know if Foursquare does Foursquare give you like I think they do now. They, they give you I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I've never tried. It, it just seems goofy. I don't know. All right. So we'll build on this next time. Um, my focus is going to be on the mobile side because, again, that's superior to the um, detection um, that happens on the server side. Um, I guess we could, I guess. From our perspective, we use the same object to access it. That geolocation either tells me where my IP is, or it tells me based on the GPS where we are. That, uh, that radius parameter that I've seen, mm -hmm. uh, the reason I'm curious about that is that even with the desktop being kind of the generic downtown, yeah. know, Leary, you get downtown Elyria, Ridgeville, we get the same thing downtown Ridgeville. But with that radius, just the sheer fact that if it picked up uh, within a certain proximity of, of downtown Ridgeville, even on a desktop, uh, but having that location-related contact. Yeah, exactly. That would be crossover even beyond the mobile platform. Uh, um, yeah, you're right. You're right. It, there's implications of this beyond the, beyond the mobile platform. Um, you know, think of all the things that we can use to customize a page. We can use the platform that you're on, whether you're on uh, Mac versus PC, uh, Android versus iOS. Uh, and, and now again, location. Um, I'm sure there's a very straightforward um, equation, algorithm, that if you give it two points, two latitudes and two latitude longitude pairs, they'll tell you what the distance is. I mean, what the heck? We have Google. Distance between <laughs> calculate the distance. I told you a very straightforward set of instructions. Huh? Yes. <clears throat> I'm thinking, I want to play with this now, but we have to have some fun next week, so we'll do this next week. Because... <clears throat> is this a cliffhanger? Yeah, this is a cliffhanger. This looks like ugly code, but what do we know about ugly code? If it works nice and we can put it in a function, then we never have to look at that ugly code again, right? We can put it in a function unless the shape of the earth changes, all right, or there's some catastrophic earthquake, this is going to apply forever. So we get this down once. I don't remember these trig functions, but if I can write a function and copy this code into a function, then I don't have to ever worry about it again. I can simply call the function. I think that just gives That's 
issues I have with side trip. When you do a, a game, uh -huh. you want to determine where you're at and where okay. the enemy is. It's, it's right. all the sine and cosine. Right, right, right. Is it between the points? But this does take into account the great circle distance. In other words, it's not drilling right. through the Earth to get from there to there. It is considering the fact that there is that the Earth has an arc. So. Okay. So, so, like, for that, thing, you know, because, like, really, if we went from here to whatever, you know, if we went through, we could make a line between here and Los Angeles, but you can't travel that straight line. You'd have to travel the arc on the surface of the Earth. And this does do the calculation of that. So we're going to play with this next week, all right, to do some stuff and have some fun. I like that. I, I, I smell a lectivity. <laughs> it's just come on, back downstairs. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking maybe we could write a web page that you 